Okay, quick video today on um, how to set up the smart bench for surfacing. I had a customer call yesterday that had uh, some problems and he had not surfaced his material prior to doing some fine engraving and some star cutting. So we went through that. But so let's let's say uh, he has to do a, a piece that's uh, 19 by 37. That's the size of his flag product that he's working with. And I'll say it, it's an inch, inch and a half thick, whatever. It doesn't matter for this operation. Um, I'm assuming he touches off in the bottom corner on the top of the material. He could touch off in the center. That's academic for this as well. So we'll just tell it okay. So this is basically his layout. Um, what I do is I draw an oversized rectangle on uh, uh, that will fit above that because he has a one inch surfacing tool with a quarter inch shank. So I'm going to draw a rectangle that's going to be uh, say 20 by 38. Uh, so an inch bigger. And then I'll tag that and I'll center it on the material so it's a little bigger all the way around. And that's going to be the, the geometry and the vectors that I'm going to work with. So I'm done centering it. I can close it. And then I just want to go straight over to the pocketing command. I'm going to pocket and I'll pick how deep my total depth of cut is going to be. Say I think the thing may be really out and it's going to be a point. 2.5 maximum difference. Say it's really humped up here in the center and I've got a low corner down here. Well, if I've got that big of a variation, I'm going to do that in three passes. So I'm going to say take an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of, depending on what bit I have and what spindle combination. And I'll pick what, what tool I'm going to use and say I have a one inch white side surfacing bit. Okay, so I'm good there. But I'm going to do it in three passes. I'm going to change it back to three passes. The reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to take a, a uh, pencil and squiggle line all over this until it's all gone. I don't care whether it's three passes or eight passes. If I have a low spot and I need this whole thing perpendicular to the spindle, I'm just going to kind of squiggle all over the top of it with pencil until it's gone. So I'm going to tell it to make three passes. Now, if I'm going to make three passes with it, but I think I may be able to finish, it may be all gone in two uh, and in, in that case, that would be a total depth of 0 .1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 6, 6, 7, so almost 3 sixteenths. Um, I may take this and make it bigger because I'll let it surface it once, surface it twice. I'll see as it's finishing up that all my pencil lines are gone. Then I want to pause it. So in order to do that, I'm going to cheat a little bit and make this a little wider and a little taller and go back and center it on the material. So it's going to be cutting air a little bit. After it finishes all the pencil marks, it'll be coming across here cutting air. And I'll have time to pause it. And I'll hear it. If I'm sitting here at the desk while it's working, I'll have time to, to re hear it, that it's not in the material anymore. It's not in the wood anymore. And I can hop up, look at it, and pause it at the machine. So I'll oversize the vectors that I'm working with. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my tool pathing. And I'm going to take my three cuts using this oversized geometry now with the right size tool and I can play with it. Do I start in the center? Do I do a cross back and forth and then a border cut? It doesn't really matter. Play with whatever type of, of uh, operation will work better for your grain directions and things like that. And that's a whole different conversation about it. So I'll call this pocket surfacing. And the way I name mine would be a one inch white side. Apparently, I hit a question mark somewhere. And calculate. And this is starting in the center and working its way out. If I wanted to go just across left to right, left to right, I could do that. I'll go back in and double click on that operation. And I'll change it to a raster type setup. And I can change the angle of that if I have wood grain that's going weird. In this case, I'm just going to let it go across it and tell it to calculate that. Now his grain is coming down this way, up and down, because it was a flag with the 13 bars and star stripes and stuff. So I'm going to rotate that. I'm Rather than cut across the grain, I'm going to cut with the grain. So I'll double click on it again, and I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And drop down, and that'll be okay. And now it's going with the grain, less tear out, less you know fuzzies. And I still have plenty of time that it'll be at least a pass that it's making the border cut and it's off the material and I'll hear that. So that would be the way I'd like to do it. I'll go save my tool, tool path. It's telling me what bit I want to use. I save my tool path and send it to the machine and off I go. We've got videos on how you save tool paths. We've got videos on how you use um, 
a file transfer. I use FileZilla. It's $20 or so. I bought it years and years ago and Wi-Fi it to the machine, but that's it. Save it and off you go. So that's how I do my pocketing, uh, my surfacing, I'm sorry. But I do them in very shallow cuts. There's no sense in taking a lot of material away. Um, and this, you know, you sling in a one-inch bit. So you want a nice shallow depth of cut. So make sure that you, in your passes, you're defining them as very shallow. You may even want to go shallower than that and go four. So that's uh, a sixteenth of an inch for the first pass. So that's fine. Take that and save it. Now, in his case, um, he may want to do multiple panels. This is a, the size of the panel of the product that he makes, but he may want to slap two of them up on the table instead. So you can certainly do that. So I would modify it after I'd, I'd save that as a single flag or single single product. But I could then I can also come back in and say I want to go uh, just just say I'm going 22 inches wide by 96 long, and that's the size of my material. And so I'm going down the whole length of the table, and I'm going to take, turn off the tool pathing so I can see a little cleaner. So I'm going to come over here and turn off the tool pathing so I just have my geometry still. But I'm going to center that on the material uh, you know, that I drew there. Again, I don't really care about the width of this piece of material. This is what I'm working with. So, But for grins, to make it look better, I'm going to center it uh, on the material. Uh, center it. And then I'll take it and just, it's highlighted, and I'll use the arrows and drop it down. And then I'll take it, Control C, Control V. So I copied and paste, Control C, copies, Control V, pastes. And then I'll just use the arrow buttons to move it on up. In my table, I've got holes that I have dog bones in, so I could set it against some of these dog bones. But again, I don't really care. I'm just going to take this visually so I can see that I've got my two uh, panels there. That's what those rectangles are for. And then I'll draw another rectangle that will be oversized a bit. And I'm just freehand drawing it. And I can double click on it, get, get the handles, and adjust it. Again, just so I know it's a little oversized. I don't really care what it is. But when it's cutting air, I know it's time to look at it and see if it's finished with it. Now it'll be in the material here. It'll skip, be out of the material for a few sec, you know, a second or two, three, depending on how, what speed you've got. And then it'll be back in the material as it's going up and down and playing with the step over. Now one thing I didn't do in the other thing is look at the step over. So we're going to take that and go over. And I'll just take the same type. Well, I'll delete this just for grins. We'll delete this. And we're going to do this big rectangle. And I'm going to do a pocket. And I'll go a total depth of quarter of an inch if I need it. I'm still using that bit, but I'm going to make this be uh, three passes. So that's a sixteenth of an inch roughly on the first pass. Uh, I've still got it rotating 90 degrees, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to just have it make sure that it's going the right direction, and it is. And then I'm going to look at it again, because in this, once I've selected that tool, I can play with the step over. What the step over is, is how big, how much of, the, of a single pass, this is with the one inch bit, so how much of that pass is going to be stepped stepped over, and then I'm going to be recutting. So I'm going to have 20% on the second pass down here. If I look at this, on the second pass down, I'm going to have 20% of it already cut and 80% cutting new material. Well, depending on the material, I may not want that. I may only want that to be 60% because that's a big bit, relatively big bit, to be cutting at speeds, depending on what speed you want to run. Um, and having the whole bit exposed, or 80% of the bit, that bit exposed, or 60%, although we're still just doing, because the number of passes we've defined here, our maximum depth of cut in our tool is set up at, at an eighth, but we're telling it here to do three, which is a sixteenth, so let's let that go. So now let's look at that. Our individual passes can be roughly a sixteenth. It's a little proud of a sixteenth. Okay, I can live with that. And my step over is now 60%, and so when I calculate it, these lines are going to get more packed. There'll be more lines across coming up and down here because there will be more passes on the long direction. So there we are. And I'll reset the preview, preview visible, and you just see the bit going in town. There's your three passes. And this is as if, as if it was a single piece of large material. And it's not. This was two different pieces, but that's how we drew it. This big rectangle was just to get this big rectangle was just to give us the size of the overall pass that we were doing. Uh, so 
on my table, I do, I do dog holes, so I could do dog holes here, slip some dog holes, some some pegs in the dog holes here, and and just wedge these corners. Or I could use a Craig inline clamp and have dog holes here. I mean, it's it's there's how you decide to hold things is all up to you, depending on your product mix and what you want to, you know, what you're building. Um, so, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call, or text, or email. That's Eric Schiller with Yeti Tool Southeast, YetiSmartBench.com. Thanks.